The estimate is that nearly 80,000 people will be diagnosed with brain tumors this year, primary brain tumors, and up to a couple hundred thousand will be diagnosed with metastatic brain tumors. Interestingly, nearly everybody is at risk for developing a brain tumor. Brain tumors can affect people from childhood to the last years of their lives uh, in their 80s and 90s. Men are slightly more affected than women, and we don't know the causes of most brain tumors. Well, there are a number of unique challenges to treating brain tumors. One challenge is that primary brain tumors can infiltrate the brain, and so they can have indistinct margins that are difficult to visualize even when we are performing the surgery. Another challenge is that the tissue around a brain tumor is uniquely important when we're talking about the brain. So in the brain, we can't just take extra margin tissue just to be safe because those areas may contain things like language function, uh, visual function, motor function. So, and that also is not visible to the naked eye. So those are two of the greatest challenges in brain tumor surgery. The Amigo Suite, which was launched at Brigham and Women's Hospital in 2011, is the Advanced Multimodality Image Guided Operating Suite. It's an NIH-funded national center site, which was developed with the idea of translating technological advances into surgical and interventional care for patients. And in the Amigo Suite, we have an intraoperative MRI scan that can be brought in and out of the room during surgery to help us visualize the tumor better. Image-guided surgery takes the information that we gain from advanced imaging and translates that into the planning and execution of surgery. In my case, it's largely surgery for brain tumors, where we can take a variety of imaging uh, types of data and bring them into the operating room. We do that by acquiring high resolution and specialty structural images of the brain and also functional images of the brain. And all of these images can be registered to one another and then registered to the patient's head during surgery. And that allows us to pinpoint the location of the tissue that we are trying to remove as well as to demonstrate where areas that we would like to preserve, areas that serve critical brain functions, are located. One of the big challenges, even with image-guided surgery, is that as we perform the surgery, the configuration of the brain is changing, and we call that brain shift. And it's due to changes in the brain itself and also as we remove tissue, things are constantly shifting and moving. And when we're talking about doing brain tumor surgery, a few millimeters of movement can be a big difference. So how to measure and track brain shift is one of the big areas that we're focused on. And so a number of technologies that we're testing and using can be used to try to measure brain shift as it's happening. We have projects using ultrasound to measure brain shift. Ultrasound is a pretty portable device that can be actually used by the surgeon. So I can take the ultrasound probe in my hand and use it and get an updated picture, and that takes just a minute or two. Another technology we use and are uh, researching is a stereo view of the operative field, which is used through the operating microscope that can measure the brain shift as it's happening and compensate for it. Neuroimaging lets us see what we can't see without some technical or technological assistance. So when we plan surgery, we now are able to see the patient's brain in great detail to look at it from different directions. And that structural imaging alone led to a huge improvement in our ability to perform accurate surgery because the surgeon knew before surgery exactly what they were looking at and looking for and where to find it. The development of various intraoperative imaging technologies 
allows us to update that information during the course of surgery in order to provide the most accurate surgical treatment for each individual patient.